my friend that I mentioned earlier, who was educated in the 1960s at a Catholic school, she told she told me that she once um, dared to ask in a in a class why the Catholic Church thought that uh, contraception was wrong, and she was immediately sent to the headmaster, who asked her why she was obsessed with sex. Okay. But what was most interesting was that even before she put her hand up to ask the question, she knew she shouldn't. Despite the fact that no one had ever said, don't question, she knew. The message was implicit. You know, the reverential tone with which certain ideas are presented, uh, the, the, the way in which people get looked at, the atmosphere can begin to settle on you and you can begin to feel the pressure not to question. Now that kind of pressure, which is surreptitious and implicit, is just as much of a problem, if not more, really, of a problem. Um, so you need to get mechanisms into schools to prevent that from happening. And I would suggest that philosophy for children type programs might be one way in which you could do that. Um, also, I want children to learn about other religious traditions, and I don't want them to learn about them from your local priest. I want yeah. them to learn about them from the people who hold them. Okay, as so I know, <laughs> as I know, in UK at religious classes, uh, is teaching on the most important religions of the world, and also on the humanist point of view of ethics, of, uh, uh, on ethics and the origin of universe and humankind. Yeah. Um, in Romania, uh, uh, we have a confessional manner to mm. teach religion. Mm. And that's why the situation here is, I suppose, very different. Yes, uh, in the confessional situation, obviously, there is, there, it, it, it could be quite oppressive so in such a way that if you happen to be an atheist or simply undecided, you could feel very uncomfortable. That you could be made to feel very uncomfortable about raising certain sort of questions or and so on. So, yeah, I want people to hear from other different religions, from the people who hold them, and also from atheists. Atheists should be in schools too, and that, that's what religious people get really upset about. If, if they don't mind, uh, you know, Jewish people don't mind Catholics going into their schools to tell them about Catholicism, but, but if they find out there's an atheist coming to their schools to talk to their children for 30 minutes, they get very, very upset about that, uh, which I find surprising. I mean, I'm talking about the UK. I don't know what the situation will be here. We have no ideas here. Yeah. Okay. So minimum standards, I've given you two, and I think there are others which I list at the end of the book. Uh, I, I, I suggest that there are certain minimum standards that all, all schools should meet. Yes? Uh, I'm a psychologist. Uh, I work in a child uh, protection department in Bucharest. Uh, so today in Romania, there are, in a legal point of view, just three forms of um, child abuse. Sexual abuse, emotional abuse, and physical abuse. Mm -hmm. But there are plenty of evidence of another kind of abuse, uh, moral abuse, intellectual abuse, mm -hmm. which is detected uh, by parents in an indoctrination manner. Yes. So I know that there are serious discussions in the UK and in the Scandinavia about this particular form of abuse. What do you think? Well, the situation, well, the situation is... Um, I mean, clearly that kind of abuse is exactly what I'm talking about. No. Uh, full control, uh, whether or not it's an extreme form of brainwashing, or, or whether or not, whether it's the kind of education my Catholic friend received in the early 1960s, which maybe we don't want to call brainwashing, but clearly was highly oppressive and psychologically manipulative. Okay. Um, I am very much opposed to that, obviously. Um, what's the situation in the UK? Well, it's complicated. There are um, every school has to have, by law, a religious assembly. Very odd, I think. Um, faith schools that are funded by the state are controlled by local council bodies made up of religious people and council people who determine what the syllabus will be. Um, 
And then the other tier is independent schools, independently funded. Um, they are not answerable really to anyone when it comes to moral and religious education. So there is a great deal of concern because one of the reasons there's a great deal of concern uh, is that clearly we have a Muslim population and some of those Muslims are becoming more and more and more drawn towards uh, a very fundamentalist form of Islam and are becoming more and more sympathetic to uh, violence, one form or another, directed against Western targets. And uh, so, th unfortunately, that is the reason <laughs> why this kind of psychological manipulation and pressure and so on has suddenly become of interest. But it's a bit of a shame because it's not just the uh, Muslims <laughs> that do it. I mean, the Catholic Church has been doing it for a very long time. It's just that they don't go around blowing anything up. Uh, at the moment. <laughs> it's wrong with labeling the yeah. child that he is a Christian or a, a Muslim or a, a Jew. It's very wrong. Yes, it's because wrong with the man ideology, hmm. not a choice. Yeah. But the ideology of parents here. Yes. I, I go through, um, in the book, I try to tease apart the different techniques which are different pressures which are applied to children in one way or another. Um, and so I look at things like uh, peer pressure and um, reward and punishment and psychological manipulation, repetition um, and so on. The, the various things, the psychological mechanisms which are being operated in order to mould children's minds to get them to believe what you want them to believe without ever giving them an argument without ever giving them a reason or a justification, you get them to believe it by causal mechanisms, you, phys you more or less physically shape their thinking causally, rather than giving them reasons or uh, getting them to discuss and question and make a rational, uh, informed decision. Um, and it, 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 we need to, I think, we need to focus on these mechanisms much more. It is true that to some extent you cannot avoid them. We all do it. We all shape our children's thinking, not just by giving them reasons, but by giving them sweets and they're good and uh, we all do it's, it's, you know, it's unavoidable but the extent to which it becomes orchestrated within a religious context or a political context then it becomes much more more and more and more like brainwashing and, and I read a book by a woman called Kathleen Turner uh, who's a, a, a neurologist neuroscientist at Oxford University and uh, she came up with the five uh, the five warning signs of brainwashing uh, and she was focusing particularly on, you know, Islamic militants and people like, and Scientologists and people like that. But what was interesting was that, you know, traditional Catholic schools ticked every box. It is brainwashing, actually. It's just that it doesn't get recognised as that because of this anaesthetic of familiarity. And blind faith and uh, suppressed critical thinking and so on. There are plenty of evidence that parents indoctrinate their children with yeah. religious belief. It's difficult to know what you can do about parents as far as their, what goes on in their own homes. Do you want to get into people's homes and start telling them what they can, how they can interact? I don't want to do that. So, uh, so you know, I don't want to get that intrusive. But as far as schools are concerned, particularly if we're all paying for them, state-funded schools, yeah, we, 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 they should be answerable to us. And we should have some control over what's going on in those schools, and they should be forced to be liberal.